Ahsoka Season 1, Episode 2, Thoughts. This episode is called Toil and Trouble. And, uh, yeah, another episode I really loved. Spoilers for these two episodes, as well as everything Star Wars that came before it. In the description box, the top link is to donate to the SAG after Strikers, an extremely important strike. Please give what you can spare. And then there are a number of links to videos that help explain why this is such an important strike. And, yeah, let's dive in. So, I realized something I, I neglected to mention in my video on the, the first episode. The score is great. I really, you know, as usual, just Star Wars, such great music when they really go for it. And, yeah, I, I quite appreciate, you know, at first we're not 100% sure why... Um, Ahsoka went back, you know, but she's, you know, she's, she was just playing it casual. She was waiting for the droid to attack because, you know, she knew that it would, that there was some chance that it would stick around to make sure that no one, you know, yeah, the, you know, droids are nothing if not thorough. And, yeah, they're actually able to use the droid to get you know, they, they realize it's from Corellia. And, yeah, really glad that Sabine did survive. And, yeah, you know, Star Wars characters have survived much worse injury. So, and, yeah. Um, you know, and, yeah, Co Corellia, that makes sense. The trailer showed, you know, a shipyard fight. So, you know, but, but yeah, the... the very cool to see Chopper, and, you know, it's not the first time we see him in live action. He is there, if you know where to look and know, you know, in, in um, Rogue One. But here, he is being as temperamental as he was on Rebels. So, yeah, you know, that is what, like, they've toned down some of these characters. If you tone down Chopper, that's just boring. You know, he's he's too fun of a character. To, to just make him completely bland. Not that the other characters are bland, but they are toned down. And, uh, yeah, not a big fan of the, you know, the, the guy who's in charge of the place is, you know, coded as Jewish, possibly Jewish actor, and there's this anti-Semitic trope of, you know, he doesn't really want to help other people, he, you know, he talks about, uh, you know, don't call him hypocritical, say rather he's apolitical, and just, yeah, not not really a fan, I felt that was, yeah, anti-Semitism is, is never okay. Uh, let's see, yeah, and Hira and Ahsoka discuss the, the issue of Sabine, and... Let's see. Yeah, you know, I I want to say, yeah, yeah, you know, one of them points out, you know, Sabine needs structure, which I mean, yeah, so so get her a construction yard. What's the big deal? And yeah, the the lightsaber that Sabine was using is indeed the the one that Ezra used to have, but apparently she's made modifications. And, yeah, wouldn't be Star Wars without parental issues. So, you know, Sabine feels like Ahsoka didn't give her enough of a chance. Ahsoka feels like Sabine, you know, wasn't quite up to the, the task. And, you know, just, yeah. I mean, at least it's not a boy and his father anymore, you know, or a girl and her father. This time they're both women, so progress, I guess. Yeah, I think it's going to be a little while before Star Wars starts taking really, like, big chances. Although, you know, other than Andor, I mean. Man, Hu Yang roasts Sabine. That's just like, you know, in all my years of teaching Jedi, I've never known one quite as bad at it as you. Just... I guess is maybe he's like is is reverse psychology part of his programming or something? Just 
holy crap, really, really loved, you know, the, the moment that we're told, you know, oh yeah, some of these guys, they're, you know, ex-imperial, like, immediately you're like, okay, this is not gonna go, there's definitely some alliance, you know, that they haven't forgotten who they used to work for kind of thing. I really like how there's these tense, like, you know, every so often, up in the control room, you know, Hira or Ahsoka will say something and it'll cut to one of these, you know, ex-imperial workers, and they're like looking, they're waiting for the right moment to, to strike, and, you know, eventually when, you know, the, you know, stop, stop that transport, I, I can't, they've been, they've been cleared for, for transport, you know, I'm giving you a direct order, and then, you know, everyone gets out their blasters and shoots, and, you know, Ahsoka, of course, quickly takes care of it, but that was really, really great bit of just, uh, yeah, and, and the thing with, you know, the, the, um, I forget what, it's, I guess it's the, it's the same kind of droid as, as C-3PO, I forget exactly what class it's called, but, you know, he's like, oh, actually, there is an HK droid here. Uh, you know, I, I saw it, you know, f five rotations ago, and it was doing this thing. You know, why didn't you, uh, why didn't you submit a report, or log it? Well, it had, you know, clearance for the, you know, which, yeah, that means there's, they have not been able to get rid of the Imperial influence there. Where is this HK droid now? Oh, I believe it's there on that ship that's leaving. <laughs> because, yeah. Why wait? You know, let's let's just jump into to more. And, you know, yeah. Ahsoka has a very cool fight against... I mean, I guess... Is it straight up an Inquisitor? Because certainly it has the lightsaber of one... I guess it's possible it's just a cuz I it just I felt like I thought did not did they not deal with all the inquisitors right right I guess there's more than we saw in in rebels cuz I heard there's some in that that game Jedi Survivor I think it's called looks looks really cool I'd I'd like to play it if I was still you know if my body didn't hurt too much to play video games these days, hopefully we'll be able to get back to it at some point. Um, let's see. Right, and you know, ultimately Ahsoka does not try to jump after the the let's go with Inquisitor when they get on the the ramp for the for the ship. Because, you know, it's over Ahsoka. They have the high ground. And let's see. Yeah. Um, like the first episode, this has a good amount of action without the action just like overpowering the story. And yeah, Hira flying straight at something. Like, like you know, she's dodging the blast, sure. But like it's firing, it's it's trying to shoot her down, and she just keeps flying. That's Hira's and Duela. See, that's the kind of scene that I was talking about. You know, that's would have been cool to have that in the first episode. I guess this is supposed to serve as... It's her first big action scene on this show, and that is straight out of Rebels. So, yeah, very, very cool. Um, and, and you know, Chopper struggling to find the, the tracking device and yelling at Hira, you know, because he can't... Yeah, straight out of that. That really felt like something from from Rebels, and I believe, um, yeah, Dave Filoni is an executive producer on this, so yeah, not a surprise that it's so true to that show. And uh, yeah, Sabine puts on the the armor and cuts off her hair so she can be a Mandalorian again. And the tracker did work, and they're well on their way to catching up to them. And Ahsoka calls Sabine Padawan, which was a great moment. And Balin does not want to kill Ahsoka, because there are so few Jedi left. Which, yeah. So there is some, I appreciate, you know, he's not just like, 
blandly evil for the sake of being evil. There is some actual, you know, there's more to him. And I think that might be about what I have for this episode. Um, let's see. Yeah, uh, I feel like it's moving along nicely. I believe there's going to be, yeah, there's there's going to be a total of eight episodes. So we're only a fourth, a quarter of the way through. And yeah, um, it's, it's, Doing doing a good job of uh, you know it's already the the plot has already taken off it would be you know you don't want to be a quarter of the way through something and the plot still hasn't you know we know we know who the villain is we know what their goal is we know what how they're trying to accomplish it you know so yeah and yeah it does feel like it makes sense this this idea of you know what what they described as how they're gonna get Thrawn back and yeah if you wanna fight another Star War having Thrawn on your side is a pretty good that's that's really gonna be a be a major boost in your ability to win that war um I think that might be everything. So, so yeah, um, catch you next week. May the Force be with you.